Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So, you can see that today we are going to be working in Paint Tools Sai. I'm showing you guys my old VTuber model as I want to revamp this model. And I'm going to be showing you guys the drawing process as well as the majority of the rigging process. Um, if you're unfamiliar, usually VTuber models, um, they kind of like on the outside look like a complete uh, illustrated character. But in reality, you have to separate a lot of the parts so that when you're doing the rigging or if you're getting someone else to do the rigging, uh, each individual part is kind of like separate and can move on its own. Um, but yeah, here's my new model that I'm going to be working on. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I was rigging and making uh, my friend's model kind of as like a test and a practice. And I did a lot of... I don't know, like fudging around, trying to figure out what I wanted to learn to make the process a little bit more streamlined. And a lot of it actually worked out after I finished her model. It was a lot of like fixing and trial and error. Actually, let me preface this video with saying that if you're not comfortable or if it um, really bothers you or triggers you with like flashing lights and stuff, I highly recommend you don't watch this video. I pan a lot. I open and close windows a lot as well as I fill the canvas by accident. Um, because I forgot to lock the layer, which causes almost like a flashing light effect. So if you're uncomfortable with that or triggers um, anything for you, I highly recommend you just either listen to the video or just skip this video and I'll see you guys next week. Uh, yeah. So I wanted to show you guys the full process and in a way it's like helping me document what I learned in a sense as well as just like how I separated each individual part because my old model I didn't know how to do a lot of things I knew how to do enough to make a basic model but a lot of the things that I wanted to learn I didn't know back then so I'm kind of treating making vtuber models as just like a way for me to learn how to do something and it's just because like it really piqued my curiosity so I wanted to take my time to teach myself how to do this just purely out of like curiosity and self-indulgence I guess so I have no um what is it called desire I guess to do commissions or do tutorials or teaching or anything like that on vtuber models I don't think I'm proficient enough for either of those and like I said, this is kind of just like a personal project. I wanted something for me to learn uh, because, I don't know, there's something I like about school is that, you know, when you do find something intriguing, you do thoroughly enjoy the learning. So yeah, this kind of brings back that little part of me that really wants to just continue to learn because I really do like enjoying learning new things if I can. And VTuber rigging and making models it's just something that's fun and i really like the end result so i really enjoy it so let's talk about the process a little bit like i said um i have no intentions of making tutorials for this so i am not going to be saying anything that's probably going to be super beneficial in terms of like tips and stuff i'm just going to add a few tidbits and explain what i did in terms of certain things versus like what i did for my old model so as I'm working, I tend to work kind of in chunks until I get to the body. Until I get to the body, it's like I do all the line work for it and then kind of like chunk in the colors. So the face is usually what I start off with and then I do the eyes. The left eye, the eye on the left side of the canvas is just a placeholder as I know most people do their models in programs that you can have mirroring or like symmetry basically just have like that middle line and when you draw on one side of the canvas you have the other side of the canvas like basically mirroring the same thing um, but i like working in paint tool sai it's the most comfortable for me to use so i decided to draw my whole model in paint tool sai as usual but for some elements such as the left eye and later on i think it's like my right shoe and then my right hand I'm saying my right hand and stuff because technically this is my persona, but it's technically not me. So it's like, you know, it's kind of both. I'm just going to refer to it to as myself. Um, but yeah, it's easier for me to make a folder and then go into Clip Studio Paint and kind of flip that folder and like, you know, duplicate it and then flip it and all the layers kind of remain 
in the same order and they don't get merged or anything. So I do some of those elements in Clip Studio Paint, but for the majority of everything else, I do it in Paint to Sai. And I think, yeah, I decided to slowly basically section each part up. I think in the beginning when I was doing the hair, I actually separated the hair in such a way where it's like, I think I had each section in a different color. So it's easier for me to visualize what sections need to be visible, what's going to be in the back, and what needs to, you know, remain so that if I were to move a section, I won't be revealing some kind of bald spot or a transparent part of the canvas. Uh, one thing right off the bat though, the left little... Is it the left? No, the right. So right of the canvas, the little hair that frames my face. Um, I should have added something underneath because I noticed that when I was either trying to turn my model's head or I was um, swaying the hair, it kind of left a bald spot <laughs> um, on that side. So that's kind of for future reference uh, for myself. I should have added some kind of like hairline or like little stray hairs or something underneath, like an indication so that I wouldn't have some weird bald spot between my head and my ear. Um, but yeah, I'm basically just sectioning off the hair, doing them one by one, and I'm just painting it in. Painting is a lot easier for me, and it's just easier to manage, because you can see my layers, they're quickly piling up, and I'm pretty sure I will hit uh, 100, probably. I can't see what I'm at currently, because my uh, viewfinder for my video is tiny, but I'm pretty sure I will hit 100, because I separated so many things into separate little pieces, so... Mm. I just think it was a lot easier because what I noticed is that in my previous model um, there was a lot of pieces I didn't separate or at least I didn't separate in a way that was probably most convenient when rigging such as like the iris so my first model I basically merged the entire iris because I always thought that's how um, people who rig would need it because I thought it'd be just easier, but no it, if you want to have a little bit more variety and a little bit more um, I guess like how to explain it Opportunity I guess to change things or add physics or movement Then you really do have to separate a lot of things like separate the pupil um, Maybe the bottom portion of the eye the highlights or any ever like lighting effects in the eyes you would separate and then even for the eye itself um, the upper lash line and the side part I actually separated it this time because in my old model I think I had it as one piece and it gave me a lot of issue um, when I was trying to do the opening and closing of the eyes <laughs> so that's another thing I learned and I did do that for Masaki's model so I did do a previous video um, basically showing the artwork of Masaki's model being made and his I separated a lot better that is the time where I also learned how to do physics for live TD. And I think after I did Masaki's model, I reopened my model, like the one on the right, and added physics to a certain extent as much as I could. I did like hair swing and I did, I think my sprout moved whenever I shook my head. That's basically it. Um, but another reason why I wanted to redo my model is that um, my model on the right is literally just cut off at the bottom of the canvas. Like, it cuts off right at the waist, like there's nothing else there. So I wanted to give myself a full body model this time, even though I don't really rig the bottom portion. Like, the legs were there for when I was doing the, I think the little bit of the, is it the Z axis or something? Z positioning so like your body can move a little bit like go right to left or whatever it was very minimal like I did more for my friend's model I think I was just a little bit too lazy to think about how the legs and the feet would interact if I were to move side to side um yeah I was trying to challenge myself to basically do this model into two days so right after my twitch stream on Thursday I decided to get dinner and then I went ahead and started to do the sketching portion of my model. And I basically just sketched over top my my old model so that I could have like a similar appearance. And I pretty much still like the look of my current, like my old model. I keep wanting to say current model, but it's my old model. Um, 
but I did want to change some stuff. Like, this model looks a little bit more softer. It does look a little bit more smaller or younger, in a sense. I think it just looks a little bit cuter, but I kind of preferred my other one as well, so who knows? I, I, I will still use this one, my... My new one I will use for now though because I definitely prefer it over my old one but I didn't hate my old one. I just didn't like the fact that I guess I didn't properly learn how to do the things I wanted to do before rigging. But like I said, um, you can actually do rigging with minimal stuff as long as you learn how to do it. Um, and you can still do it quite well. It's just like you know, you just have to learn the process, I guess. And from even for me, like, there's a, a lot of things I want to learn how to do. I don't like. I don't know how to do expressions yet. I also don't know how to do skinning. Skinning will definitely help for a lot of like hair physics and stuff. Um, but things I've learned is that if you make a mistake on your artwork, you can re-import uh, different elements as layers, and you can re-put them back in. And when I'm raking. I actually always have the HeoD model. So the HeoD model is a free model on the Live 2D website. And I always have that one open so that I can copy all the parameter folders, which is like the manila yellowy area that you guys see. And then on the left of that, there's like a bunch of like folders and stuff that you guys can see. So that's where I'm putting like warp deformers, um, the rotational deformer type things and all that jazz so that I can move my model. Um, so basically whenever I have the HeoD model, I am basically flipping back and forth. I'm making sure that my parameters match that parameter of the model as well as all my deformers follow the same uh, order. Because that was another issue I ran into when I made my first model was that I, I didn't follow the order correctly. So when I started to add more things, it would not move them as a whole because I didn't add the deformers correctly or I didn't add um, things in folders correctly. So I always do everything in the same order as the one shown in the HeoD model going from I think the Z body deformer, then it goes Y, then it goes breathing, and it goes like to a bunch of different ones. So you gradually start to get more specific. I did it the opposite way when I was doing my my first model where I went from specific to general, which was a bad idea because it definitely made my model very janky. And I probably restarted that one like several times. Granted, like whenever I'm learning something new, I do a lot of trial and error. So it's like a lot of it is that sometimes I think I know how to do something and then I run into a problem and often I have to restart. So it's a very inefficient way of learning, but still it at least solidifies it into my brain. Uh, but yeah, so now we're on to the rigging. So when I was doing the filming for this, I pretty much filmed all of the rigging minus, I think it's the eyeball movement. I will show a glimpse of it though because I do alter it a little bit as well as the Y axis for the hair. So whenever my character moves her face up or down, um, I have to shift the hair up or down as well so that it looks like, you know, she's kind of bending forward or bending back and I didn't film that because my computer was having issues containing all my recording files. I think I took five to six hours on the drawing of the model and separating of the parts and then probably nine hours maybe more than nine hours I don't know basically that's how long I spent on rigging the character so um, I do the x-axis and the y-axis after I rig the eye so one thing I learned, at least for myself, when I was rigging my friend's model is that I need to rig the eye first. I know some people rig the eye after they do the X axis. Some people do it after X and Y axis. I don't know. I do it first after the, basically like the, the general body stuff. So like the breathing or the tilting of the body I do first and then I will do the eyes because when I did the eyes afterwards and I added it to the face, a lot of it would move in like opposite directions or things would be squished or things just look very weird. So yeah, it was easier for me to do the eye first, then do the face. Then I did the eyebrows, the eyeballs, the mouth, which is what I'm currently rigging. And then I will add all those properly 
and synthesize the corners after locking and linking my face parameters and stuff and it just works a lot better for me so I don't have to worry about it. I'm probably gonna keep doing that order so that I don't run into the problem that I did before. Okay, uh, here's some big major part of why I'm able to rig a little bit more easily than before. I know my rigging is still very janky and my lines and stuff are not very smooth, but um, being able to add, I don't know what it's called, but sometimes like you can see some like things like the curving of the mouth. I think I had it on the upper part of the brows as well as like the upper eyelid or eyelash line thing. I would set like different points going across that line so that I could easily bend it. So I didn't do that for my very first model. So I would move these individual little points with these triangles that you can see right here, which is the art mesh. And I would manually make the shapes this way and it was very inefficient it makes stuff look very janky and unnatural so i learned how to do that i learned how to do physics i learned how to kind of streamline how to flip and reverse the eyes and stuff i don't know there's a lot of things i learned and i'm glad i learned because i'm having fun making vtuber models just for fun but i definitely need a break so i'm going to put skinning and what was the other thing? Expressions. Kind of like on the back burner. Because I don't need to learn that right now. I think what I have right now is fine by me. It's more than enough at this point. So the character with the white hair, purple and yellow outfit is actually my friend's character. Um, she basically gave me like a headshot of her character and I worked with her to create the VTuber model. And then I went ahead and took that as a way for me to practice how to do the rigging so she, because I was the one who suggested it, it to her and she had some interest in just like um, like art and the model itself and stuff I was able to take my time and just fudge around with it play around and try to learn as much as I could before I give her the model because you know it's kind of good practice like not knowing the character as well as designing the character with her it was a lot of fun I don't know this is more self-indulgent stuff I guess uh, but yeah, I'm just moving the body. I added more warp deformers and stuff to the arms because I noticed that the rotational ones didn't do enough for me so I can make the uh, body look a little bit more natural when she, my model moves side to side or, or like kind of like tilting her body. So this window that you're currently seeing is me doing the physics. So whenever my model is actually moving, I'm using their play button, which has like presets um, of the model moving and stuff. So you can test to see the movement. I am going in live 2D, or not live 2D, VTube Studio and showing you guys what my old model looks like. I'm also importing my new model, which is this one. So now I have a full body. Um, and you can see that this one just moves a little bit more naturally and I have a bigger range for at least my mouth movement. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching today's video. I am actually just winded from just talking to the mic right now. I spent way too long and too much time trying to cram this in to, to two days trying to make this model. But hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me kind of play around, learn how to make a model and stuff, as well as just, I don't know, it's just me fudging around trying to figure things out. And even right now, I was trying to figure out... Um, parameters and I noticed that the sprout on my head doesn't move uh, whenever I kind of like swish my head around so I needed to do that later <laughs> I was fixing the sensitivities as well as like I think I fixed the physics in my eyes as well so that they have like little glossy parts and stuff I don't know my brain's like uber fried right now I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video and as well as I'll be showing you guys the model a little bit more slowly at the end so stay tuned for that but yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.